In this screencast, we're going to talk about some properties of water and some of them that we actually saw in a polar, nonpolar molecule lab that we did in class. So recall that water is a polar molecule. The covalent bonding between the hydrogen and the oxygen forms a, a polar molecule because oxygen has a slightly higher electronegativity than the hydrogen. So therefore, it's going to win the tug of war between the two atoms. And this electronegativity tug of war occurs a lot with between hydrogen and fluorine, between hydrogen and oxygen, and between hydrogen and nitrogen. We are concerned with what happens in a water molecule for the most part. So because water molecules are polar, that is going to promote hydrogen bonding between water molecules. Hydrogen bonds are relatively weak bonds between like molecules and specifically with water and they have an additive effect however so water actually sticks to itself pretty well. We refer to water sticking to itself as cohesion. Again water is a polar molecule therefore it's going to be very conducive to hydrogen bonds between the individual molecules of water. So you've all seen before, you've seen drops of water cling to the surfaces of different substances. Cohesion causes the water to actually form the drops. Cohesion is going to stick to itself. We call it surface tension because they appear to be nearly spherical, and it depends on the substance which they're on. We'll get to in a bit. Adhesion keeps the drops in place. So cohesion, water sticks to itself. Adhesion, water, being a polar molecule, sticks to other substances. So water is going to form drops because of this cohesion and we call that surface tension. And that surface tension is why we can see some insects that actually tend to walk on the water and it's because water sticks to itself. That surface tension isn't really a physical barrier or a film on the surface. However, water does stick to itself and does cause surface tension. So adhesion is going to make water actually stick to other substances. Water does like to stick to itself first and foremost, so water tends to stick to itself. But something like a glass sheet Notice that the drop is actually flatter than it would be on the wax paper, which you saw in lab. The water itself is going to stick to itself. It's going to be attracted to itself, and you typically are going to have a nice round drop. But on the wax paper that we saw, the, the adhesion is not quite as strong as it would be again on the glass. So on a glass or even the surface of your desk, you'd have a much flatter drop of water. But on the wax paper, the adhesion is not as strong and you have a greater spherical object. And so the water almost seems to roll over itself like a ball rolling on the ground on wax paper. So just a different view and a different explanation of a drop of water and its surface tension on the wax paper versus the glass. Because water is polar, it has no adhesion to the wax that's on the wax paper. The wax is nonpolar. It, it seems to roll across the surface of the wax paper. Water is going to, again, be more adhesive to the glass surface than the wax paper. So we'll look at a couple other applications of this of these properties of water, uh, capillary action. Capillary action is the is the force really that causes water to climb up tubes. The small spaces or pores that are in water, if you think about dipping a paper towel in a cup of water, the water seems to climb up the paper towel. Or walking around in dewy grass with jeans on. And I can remember doing that as a kid with the water actually climbing up the pant leg a little bit. That is because water sticks to other things and itself. This is also the force, capillary action, due to adhesion and cohesion, which allows 
trees, for instance, to take water from the soil, and it's transported against the force of gravity all the way up to the leaves, which need the water for photosynthesis. In a science class, we talk about the meniscus, the meniscus being that U-shaped pattern on the edges of a graduated cylinder. Well, we also have a meniscus. If you would look very closely at a glass of water when you are drinking, glass of ice water, you'll see the meniscus. You'll see the water surface, but you'll also see how on the ends the water molecules are going to slightly stick to the surface of the glass as well. You attempted to mix a number of different substances in this lab as well and we gave you some, we gave you one that was substance X and substance X was hydrophobic. It didn't mix at all with the water. It was much like oil. It was a hydrocarbon substance. So oil and water are not going to mix water with hydrocarbons or with nonpolar substances they aren't going to mix well together and they will separate. Just as an example, if we were to dissolve something like food coloring, water is polar and food coloring is polar. So they would indeed mix together. They would come into solution. Oil or the other hydrocarbons that we used were not charged. They're, they were nonpolar. Therefore, they wasn't going to have that hydrogen bonding and they wouldn't come apart in water. It's an important thing to remember that polar molecules are likely to dissolve polar molecules. So any attempt to shake or mix oil and water or hydrocarbon and water or nonpolar substances and polar water, they may look like they start to mix but they will separate from one another. So without going into any greater detail, you've probably seen this in water, even, even in lakes maybe in rivers, you've seen pictures of oil spills on TV, or maybe even in a puddle in a parking lot, you'll see the non-mixing of the polar and non-polar substances. And so what that leads to um, from an environmental standpoint is finding ways to get rid of oil and water mixing, trying to find a way to clean up oil spills or contaminations. In another activity, you tried to put as many drops as of you could as, what the? I just decided to leave that in there to see if anybody was listening to this screen, screencast or not. In another part of the lab, you tried to put as many drops of water as you could on the penny. And you compared that to the amount of drops that you could put of rubbing alcohol on a penny. And what you probably found unless you had any substances that were contaminated, like some of you found in your lab. But what you found is that you definitely get more drops of the water on a penny than you would the alcohol. Well, due to cohesion and surface tension, water is going to stick to, it, to itself and other substances. The hydrogen bonding in the alcohol, it's, it's not as closely interlocked. There's, it has to do with the structure of the molecules that make up the, the alcohol molecules. There is some hydrogen bonding going on, but it's not to the extent of water. Therefore, the alcohol molecules are likely, more likely to, dis to disperse and not cling to each other like water does. So in this part, or this activity in the lab, um, first of all, the, the pepper the pepper flakes float for the same reason we've revisited over and over again. They don't sink or dissolve in the water. Uh, pepper is not only nonpolar, but it's hydrophobic, meaning that the water is not attracted to it. So because of that, the pepper can't dissolve in the water. Uh, but they float because water molecules are going to stick together, and the pepper flakes are so light and hydrophobic that the surface tension keeps them floating on top. But why does the pepper shoot to the side? Um, soap is able to break down the surface tension. So on the toothpick, there actually was a, a detergent solution on the end of the toothpick. And that's part of what actually makes soap a good cleaner. And as the soap moves into the water, the surface tension changes, and the pepper no longer floats on the top. But the water molecules still want to keep the surface tension going, 
so they pull away from the soap and they actually carry the pepper with them. And the last activity is where you floated a paper clip on the surface of the water. Uh, the water molecules, again, have a certain amount of cohesion resulting in surface tension. And a paper clip is gently set on the surface of the water. The weight is less than that surface tension and it can't break the surface of the water. So technically, it doesn't really fit the definition of floating any more than if it was sitting on your desk because the paperclip definitely has a higher or greater density than the water. But it's sitting on top of the water because of surface tension. If you were actually going to try this with the tip, if you tried to use the tip of the paperclip, it would be way too much pressure and it'd break the surface tension of the water and then, of course, sink. Um, like other parts of the lab, if we were to add a detergent, a, a soap, or any other, any other non-polar substance to the, to the water, it would change those cohesive properties and it would decrease the surface tension.